deciding whether to read a book or not. It clues me in as to the storyline, but I'm more inclined to dip into a chapter or two to see if I actually like the writing style of the author. Oh, really? So you'd actually read the first chapter, the second chapter, the third chapter, just to see? Yes. Okay. Just have a, what I call a mosey into the book. Some authors, I don't like their writing style. Right, OK. I, I read a book, um, The Fist of God, The Fist of God, by Frederick Forsyth. Mm -hmm best intro ever. Okay, I read this intro and I thought, I've got to read the rest of this book. Can I tell you what the intro was? Yes. Listen to this. The man with ten minutes to live was laughing. Full stop. Come on. Isn't that good? That would pique my interest as well. I read, and you know what? It was a terrible book. <laughs> it, was a ter it was one of the worst <laughs> books. I, I thought, oh my god, I've been fooled. I thought the guy who wrote this intro is not the same person that, read, that wrote, wrote the rest of the book. It really was slow, it was, it was boring and it was just so much detail and I just thought to myself, why? Why? How could you possibly write an intro like this and then fail so miserably to deliver a story? But some people are what you would describe as descriptive writers mm -hmm. and he perhaps falls into that category. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Let's play a game. Imagine for a second, if you will, that you could forget every single book you'd ever read in your life and you had the opportunity to reread three books for the very first time. Not reread them as in, you know, their familiar territory, but these brand new books to you. Which three books would you choose to reread for the very first time? Could I actually pick three series rather than three books? Hey, it's your world. Thinking about it, I would actually go for the Dune series. Excellent. And there are 15 books in total. And as you've just quoted with Frederick Forsyth, the first book was diabolical. It was awful. But once you completed the first book and got into the second, you were away. But why did you continue with the second book once you read the first book and you thought to yourself, that wasn't so good? I did it as a dare almost, because my ex-husband had tried reading them and couldn't get into it. And I said, no book defeats me. And, it, and, it and that was how I started. Fantastic. And he's made your list of um, top three books or series of all time so the dune series yes okay so I'm, I'm guessing there's another series to follow this one yes which one it's by an author called Catherine Carr and she wrote a series called Daggerspell and it's a fantasy series and it goes backwards and forwards in time about the life of a young woman and I took many years to read that because I had to wait until each book was published. Wow, how many? And there's three books in the series? No, there are in total with that. I think there's about 12 or 14 now. Uh, it sounds like the sort of thing they could have made a film out of, did they? Yes, they, no, they haven't, but they could have. They should. And each book would be a complete story on its own. Okay, and your third book in this uh, reenactment? Going down a totally different route, uh, going back to a very old author who died many years ago, a lady called Elizabeth Googe, and this particular one is called The Scent of Water. Oh, my. That's got to be an old book. That's what, 1970s maybe? Oh, much earlier than that. Can we show the camera? This, look at the cover of this book. That's what books used to look like in the 19, what, 1960s? 50s. 1950s. There, look, can you see that? The, our camera person is saying, move it slightly. So this is The Scent of Water by Elizabeth Gooch. What's so good about The Scent of Water? She's a very relaxing read, and this particular book is set around an English village, and it really takes you back to that time of what village life was like. And we're talking about in an English village back in the 19... English village, probably post-war. Post-war. 1950s, totally, early 1950s. Totally different world to the world that we know now? Yes. In what way? Different values, different morals, and also the authors of that time tended to be much more descriptive, and it was like painting a picture. You could step into it. I get the feeling that for you, reading a book is almost like a... It's, it's an opportunity to escape into a different world. It's not so yes, much about it information, it's about experiencing life seen through the eyes of other yes. people. Yeah? 
and for you, would you prefer to go back in time to find out how people lived back in those days, or would you prefer to go forward in time? To I would prefer to go forward to see how mankind develops and how the world develops, because I personally don't think technology is the answer to everything. No, uh, I think we're, we're both of the same mind uh, in that respect anyway. Um, I think technology is, it's got a lot of good things going for it, but... And a lot of bad. A lot of bad things as well. So in, in terms of books, um, I know you've been asked this a hundred million times before, genres. We, we've talked about fantasy, we've talked about period period drama related books. What type of genre do you think you're naturally drawn to? I tend to go to the realms of fantasy because it shows the imagination has no bounds. I like that. You can imagine exactly what you want. You're only limited by your own limitations. Have you ever thought about writing yourself? I do write. You do? For my own personal amusement rather than publication. And in recent years I've gone down the route of poetry. Okay, what would it take for us to get you to come back and read something that you've written? Possibly a glass of wine okay, to relax right. the inhibitions. Right, okay, we're going to get a tankard of elf. We're going to get a tankard of L, and we're not going to hold back. This is a, you know, no expenses spared. We would love to hear what you've been working on. Let's talk about the greats. Who would you say deserves to be recognised as maybe one of the great authors of the 21st, so 20, 22nd century? Without a doubt, J.K. Rowling for the Harry Potter books. Really? Yes. Not so much because of her expertise as an author, but because of what she's achieved for children. For children to be so enraptured by the Harry Potter series that they actually go to the bookstore and queue yeah. on the day of release because they want the next book is amazing. Can you imagine in an age dominated by iPads and games consoles, exactly. children actually queuing up to buy yes. a book? And actually, if you read her books, and I did in the end, because it was curiosity on my part, Harry starts off at the age of 10 or 11, mm. and she matches that book to that age group. And as Harry gets older each year, she matches the writing style to the age of the person. Yeah, very clever. So by the time you get to Harry at the age of 17, she's writing in a totally different style. I'm trying to imagine you as a child, and I'm, I'm wondering, what would young Vera at eight years old have been reading? Definitely Enid Blyton. Ah, The Famous Five. The Famous Five would be one. The Adventure series, The Castle of mm. Adventure, The Sea of Adventure, etc. They were brilliant fun. Mm. Can you remember actually sitting down and, and going through those pages as yes. a child? Yes, oh yes. And would you go back now and revisit those I books? I still do every now and then. You just do. to recapture that no nostalgia and the magic of it all. Ah, it, 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 does it actually does it make you feel happy or yes. sad to, no, to, happy. to recall? No, happy. Happy, yeah? Because it opened up a whole new world. How important do you think it is for kids to, to, to experience what you experienced at eight years old? I think it's absolutely vital. Why? Because it's a way a child can learn to develop their imagination and their curiosity and that can stay with you all your life. I can't agree with you more, honestly. Um, I know that it's so much easier to watch a screen or to go into YouTube or to go into Google, but there's nothing that can actually replace the written word. Um, to the point where I have always said, when I come to pop my clogs, I would like to be buried with a whole stack of books to keep me occupied. That's going to be a huge coffin. Yes, it would. That's going to be a huge <laughs> coffin. Well, look, I'm hoping that you're not going to be popping your clogs anytime soon because I think once you've finished your book of poetry, I'd love you to come back and talk to us and tell us some more about what you've been working on. Would you do that for us? Yes, I probably would in respect to poetry. Um, this is Readers and Writers, yeah, and we're talking to Vera, who is one of the founding members of a book club in the Limousin region called Readers and Writers, R-A-W. They're based in the Limousin of France, but if you need to find out more about them, just go onto Facebook and search for Readers and Writers Limousin. See you soon.